Hi, I'm Becca and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make this very cute pointy centre panel card. Um, it's just basically squares laid on top of each other, so it'll work, but it looks really fancy. Don't be yet put off by it, it is really really easy to do. And uh, we've got some nice embellishments on the inside and then you can write your image on the back. I've used some glossy accents to make the little candy canes and the lollies look like they're real sweeties and so yeah I've um, really enjoyed putting this one together so let me show you how right so to make this card these are the uh, supplies that uh, I've used so uh, I'll just go through these first I've used the gingerbread man uh, set and that is the crafter's companion uh, pop-up box collection for the um, the gingerbread men that I'll be using and then I've also used these stamps which are from Simply Cards and Paper Craft issue 221 I've used the sentiments off of here and I use, I've used the uh, Santa so I've done those ones I've already stamped and coloured lots of the images out ready for me to use and then also I've got all my mats and layers so I'll go through all the measurements with those with the aft uh, as I were, we're going through and this is just the back where I'm going to be writing my sentiment on the back and my message to whoever it was going to be getting it. I'm also using two of the Spectrum Noir Tri Blends. This is the Magenta Blend and Earth Brown Blend. If you've not got the um, Tri Blend uh, pens but you've got the individual colours, this is MG1, 2 and 3 and EB1, 2 and 3. So those are the colours that I'll be doing. I've done uh, like 95% of the colour and I just want to show you how I do one of the, the gingerbread men. And then the ink pads that I've used is the Alcohol Proof Noir Black, which is what I've used for the outlining uh, one, uh, what I'm going to be colouring in. And then for the sentiment on the back, I'll show you. I've used uh, Spectrum Noir Quick Dry Bordeaux. It's a, a ni nice Christmassy red. So, we'll get started. Let's just clear the, the way. So, like I said, you'll have seen how this card turns out already because uh, I've planned the card out, but in my head it's working. So, just fingers crossed, it all works. Right, so those are as mats and layers. Right, so to make the uh, main base of the card, I've just got up. Knocking my things over. So this is going to be the back of the easel, and it measures seven and a half inches by five inches. And on the uh, seven and a half inch side, just score down at either half an inch or seven inch, depend. You know, either side. It's just a half an inch tab, and then. I'll just get my notes out while I've written it down. And then on the uh, five inch side, we've got, uh, I think I did it at, yeah, at one and a half inches, and then at three and a half inches. And then you'll also need a piece of, we'll go underneath, uh, a piece of seven and a half by two inches. And that's going to create the the front part of the easel and then for the squares that go on the front you need three three inches by three inches and then that will make the basic card shape so we'll get on with doing that bit first then I'll go through all, uh, with all the other numbers with you then so so as you can see We've got a long score line here and then we've got three sections. We're wanting to cut away these two outer sections. So you want you need to cut away the score line. So if you cut to the right hand side of this one, to there, and then on the left side of the other one, I'm trying to make sure that there's no uh, 
shadow. There we go. And then you just want to cut the underside of the uh, up to that way you've cut down on that one. And the same on the other side. So then you're left with a little tab. So then you just want to just fold and burnish it. The card that I've used for my base is from the Christmas, uh, sorry, Crafter's Companion Twas the Night Before Christmas set. And this is the um, the plain 12 by 12 pad that had got all the pearl colours in uh, that I've used for the, the base of the card. Right, and then you need to take your uh, two inch two inch by seven inch strip and we're going to stick it to this little tab I've got all prepared there we go see I'm just using the uh, crafters companion tape pen for quickness uh, but if you've got a, a good tacky glue that'd also work I'm just doing this for quickness for the uh, for the video and then just make sure you can see and then you're just lining it up over that tab, up with the top so it's flush with the top of the card and just make sure that it's straight and then just give it a good rub and then you've essentially got the, the base of the card you can see it properly that way it's a bit flimsy at the moment but once we've got all the other uh, elements put onto it it'll be nice and strong and it'll stand uh, firmly Right, so before we put the um, the squares on in the order that we want them to go on, uh, this is just my uh, base that I've worked it out. I wanted to put some layers onto these, so before we can put them down, we need to uh, put the uh, mats on those. So each of the mats, because these squares are three inches by three inches, you need three that are two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So, and that will create a nice matte layer for there. So I'll go ahead and That are three squares that are matted up with this gorgeous red mirror board that again is from the uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas uh, paper set uh, from Crafters Companion and then we need a mat for this section here so I'll show you that way makes a bit more so you can see it more clearly so what I've done is I've cut a section that is six and three quarters by one and three quarters so that will go underneath there. There we go. So we've got that all sorted. And then we'll put the mats on the inside in a moment. But uh, I'm just wanting to get this uh, these parts put on first. Now... You can eyeball it or you can uh, measure it precisely. That's totally up to you what you wish to do. Uh, I'm going to uh, eyeball it, I think. And then, so what we're going to do is we're going to put them uh, in a diamond formation. Let's see if I can do it that way around because that's uh, how you'll be seeing it. You know, want to try and get it as much in the middle as you can. If you've got a mat like what I've got, I always try and uh, line it up with those. So, so that's. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we want 5.5 on that one. So 1, 4, round about there. So if you just line it up with that and just try and keep an eye on there, so you know it's going to go in that direction. So you're only going to need to put adhesive down the middle. Again, if you've got a tacky glue, you could use this, uh, use that, and then uh, just, you just have to wait a little bit longer for it to, to dry. That's that one. 
and then the next one is going to end up overlapping it but it's it's just going down the middle again I just realised that's a little bit wonky oh. and I even stood up and hovered over it and I thought I got it straight there we go, that's sorted so that one will be going really not doing well with this one Oops. Right. So that one will go there. So we'll just put adhesive down the middle again. And then there's middle. Just make sure I've got it right way then. Try and line it up with those. There we go. And then the last one is going in the middle of those. So you just need to try and uh, match up your points and try and get those lined up with these ones. So again, adhesive down the middle. I just spend some time and uh, Try and get it how you want it. If you prefer measuring, feel free. Just put some little marks on with a pencil or something, and I've messed up my nail varnish. Right, so there we go, we've got those ones. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to put the mats and layers on the inside. So, as you can see, you can see the joining of the tab, um, what we've done. So, I've created another strip of six and three quarters by one and three quarters which is going to go down first and then I've got some pattern paper which is one and a half by six and a half so when you open the card, again you're seeing it the other way around, I'm going to have it running down that way. Again, this is from the Was the Night Before Christmas paper pad. Oops. So, and then we're going to go onto the inside. Now, I'm going to put my uh, message on the back of the card because I want to decorate the inside a bit. So, for the inside here, I've got another amount and layer for this one, which is four and three quarters by six and three quarters, which is in that lovely mirror board again. And then I've got some more of that beautiful um, backing paper. So that is four and a half by six and a half. Love these papers because they're uh, all double sided. So there's there's not any side that I don't like. I just like this uh, nice stocking side for this project. Again, just eyeball it and get as straight as you can. So if you're a little out, you you can because it's mirror card. You can actually um, peel it off if you're lucky, and then just see. It's it when you're doing this. It is easier if you're using a wet glue because you've got that wiggle time. Um, to position it all together where you want it and because I'm doing it on camera I'm not getting it very straight at all today you'd think I'd been on the uh, arches and lemonade already but I assure you I'm not 
plus it's two o'clock in the afternoon, middle of the week. Right, okay. And I tend to wait until the kids have gone to bed to have a drink, but there you go. So, look there again. See, now, if you're not completely straight with it, don't it, I'm going to be putting things around it so it'll not, you'll not be able to tell all that much. But if you're a perfectionist like me, you'll know there is there and it'll bother you. So, right, that's the inside of the card, all matted and layered up. Now, on the other side, uh, I didn't have any more of the mirror board left, but in the same uh, paper pad, they've got this gorgeous pearlescent red. So I've made a mat and lay the same size as the other one, which is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And then I'm just going to centre that. And then I've got my next layer, which has got peace, love and hope, health and happiness. So that's the sentiment that I've got on the back. Just make sure that I've got it lined up the right way. Let's go that way. This part to do this card is probably cutting all the mats and layers and then colouring the images in what you want to use. But I'm going to show you how to do that. a pencil mark on there. Oh, there we go, it's gone. So, right now it's just a decoration part. So, I'm going to show you how I colour in um, all my little characters that I've used. Just show you the ones that I've got out. So I've got some nice gingerbread men, uh, some gingerbread houses. I've got that to put on the inside uh, of the card. Uh, I've got Santa, I've got some uh, glasses of uh, mulled wine. What else? Oh, and I've got a few bows and some candy canes and holly and midget gems and lollies and things like that. And then wherever the sweets would be shiny, if you, you know, you were having real sweets, just use some glossy accents and just covered over where it would be and it just looks like the, the glazed and shiny like they would be if they were real sweeties. So, right, so to stamp the images I used uh, my rocker block and I used the ink uh, that I told you about. This is the alcohol proof one simply because I'm using the um, tri-blend pens. I didn't want the uh, images to uh, smudge or bleed. So, right, so what we're going to start off with See if I can zoom in a little bit while we're doing this. There we go. I don't want to get too close that it goes blurred for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the lightest colour first. This is a good thing about the tri blends. It takes a lot of the thinking away for you. If you're like me, you can't think of what shade would go next. These are really good. My husband on the other hand he's got a very keen eye for colours and things and he has all the individual colours but I pinch these off for him because I find them easier. So I just take the lighter colour and we're just going to go all over where we want them to be. The card that I'm using is the Crafters Companion uh, stamping white card and I think it's 330 GSM if I remember right. I'm just going over. I'm avoiding all the little white lines because I want it to look that like she's got white icing on. Keep forgetting I've got to keep you in within a certain area for you to be able to see what I'm doing. That's my cat meowing in the background, wanting to go out, and she's only just come in. So 
please excuse the meows. That would be a little sweetie. I think this pen is running out. We could actually do with actually filling it up. I don't know whether if we've actually got this reinker, I might have to go onto the shopping list. So now, because this is the little gingerbread lady, she's got a skirt on. So I'm going to leave that um, plain so I can do it into a, like a coloured icing like I've done on this one. See how I brought it in enough? Yep. Yeah. Whereas the gingerbread man is, he's not got any chance. He's nude. But the, uh, luckily the uh, gingerbread lady, she's she's got a bit of more class about her. She's got a, got a skirt on the least. Okay. So I think this would probably be the um, part that takes the longest, depending on uh, how much you're actually wanting to put onto the card. I've just stamped out loads of images and just sat and coloured them in one evening because um, I weren't know, didn't know exactly how much I was going to use. So right, so now uh, what I do is I go around and do the dark areas. Uh, what which I want to do, which is the darkest of uh, the EB3. So now, depending on how you're wanting to do it, is whether if you want you it to look as though it's this is for if you're wanting to do dimensional colouring, not just flat colouring. Whereas this is what you call flat colouring, where it's just all coloured in in one colour and you don't do any shading. I like to put some shading in just makes it look a bit more realistic to me um, so you decide whether if you actually want a light coming from a, a, a certain angle or if you want it just the light hitting uh, the item that you're colouring in so I want it as though light's just shining on the front of the gingerbread lady so I'm going to do it darker all the way around and so that it, and then it'll look lighter in the middle as we uh, work with this it'll, uh, it'll show uh, what I'm meaning so I'll just go around the end, by the edges, sorry. It's always better to put on less than more because you can always add on, add more ink, you can't take it off. My cat's really not happy. <laughs> Knowing her, she'll come and start walking on the, my work. It doesn't work, make me go and let her out. So, there we go. And then all the way around. There. Right, so I've gone all the way around like that way. So what you need to do next is you're needing to blend in the darker colour to the lighter colour if you're doing it at the angle that I do. You do that in the other ways, but it's the way that you uh, perceive the light to be hitting it as to where you actually put the dark areas. But because I'm going straight from the front, I thought it'd be uh, the easiest way to, to show you. So I've got the middle colour, which is the EB2. And it's just basically going over the darker colour and blending it into the middle but leaving a lighter area right in the middle it'll make sense uh, so at the minute it looks a bit like I've just burnt the outside of my uh, gingerbread lady but it'll all, uh, all come together in the end please excuse my nails I have painted them <laughs> And they've been drying for about an hour and I've realised that they have chipped already. I think I need to uh, have them done at the uh, nail shop rather than uh, doing them myself. But anyway, not for me babbling on. So I've done that. So now we're going to go back over all of it and blend it in with the lighter colour. And this will drag out the darker colour into the centre and 
blend it in with the lighter one. So you'll not get those coarse edges from one colour to the next. And the more you go over it, because it's alcohol pens, the alcohol evaporates, but it pulls out some of the pigment from the darker colours and it blends it into the middle so it makes it look 3D. That's why I like doing it this way because it just it gives that bit of dimension when it's not putting too much thickness onto your card. Because depending on where you're sending this or who you're giving it to if you're posting it, you don't want it to be you know too thick or heavy, you might want it to go into a certain size envelope. Right, so that's going over it once. Now I tend to not go back over it with the dark when I'm doing it this way around. But I'm going to go back in with the medium colour again. Just again. And just give it little flicks. And this sort of just redefines the outside a little bit. Just blends them in a little bit more. Again, you can do this just by colouring it in one colour. This is just how I'm wanting to do it. So if you're mass producing these cards, you might not want to um, spend this much time on them. Right. Let's put that back on. And then just again, just go over the join. As the alcohol evaporates, it um, brings out that dimension that I'm looking for. Oops, and I've gone over it. Worry about that, I'll go over that with the white gel pen in a bit. Okay, so we've got our uh, gingerbread lady all coloured in uh, body wise. So now I'm going to go on to doing her skirt, the little sweetie, and the bow. So, like I said, I'm using the magenta blend, which is M1, eh, MG1, 2, and 3. So I'm going to start out with the palest colour again. Now, it's up to you whether how um, 3D you want to make them look. Obviously, the little bow's not got much space for you to um, do all the, the shading in and just put a few highlights in, as you'll see me do. But the skirt, you just do exactly the same way. So you're flooding the area that you're wanting to colour in. And then you go around the outside oh no I'm out of camera sorry so I'm then go for the middle colour I tend to like to do all that small circular movements and then I'll just go back in and then just go over the whole thing and that will totally blend the three shades together there you go and then I think the little sweetie in the middle will do in the brightest colour
So there we have it. All depleted on what little uh, embellishments put on. And I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Can't really uh, show you properly it stood up. <coughs> As you can see uh, when it's stood. <laughs> it's pretty much like that but it, it does stand quite sturdy. Let's see if I can zoom out a little bit. No, oh, wrong way. No, that's as far as I can get. Uh, but it'll just stand up like a, a regular card. On the inside you can see I've just put that uh, sentiment there and I've put the gingerbread men on and the little tree. This is actually a, another little uh, lollipop but just in, uh, in the shape of a Christmas tree and some midget gems going around there. And then on the back I've put Santa and ho 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 and the nice glass of mulled wine and the sentiment there for me to just put the whoever's going to be receiving this. Apart from me smudging all my nail polishes, I'm, uh, I'm quite pleased with how that one's turned out. Um, I like how the little gingerbread people are uh, just popping out from the corner so it gives you a hint of what's going to be on the inside of the card. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, really pleased with that one. I think I'll call it a, a, a pointy front panel card or something like that, pointy centre card or something like that. You'll know when uh, you start the video out because I'll have uh, done the intro. But I hope you've enjoyed that and I've inspired you to have a go at making this card. If you've got any questions, just leave them in the uh, comments below and I'll try and answer you as best I can. So thanks for watching. Bye!